Welcome everybody today to another do-it-yourself video at the Boyle County Library. We're going to talk about knots. Knots been around for thousands of years, used by the primitive people of, of America and all over the world to make their huts, tie their canoes up, make fishing nets. And they originally probably used vines, tendrils, bark, and things like that, sinew from anim animals. And today, we're going to use some of our materials, which we have, and a lot of the ropes we have now are made out of the nylon, most of what you see is a nylon rope, and we have the uh, sisal rope, which we made out, which we made out of uh, baler's twine, and then some more nylon, and then just different kinds of, of twine and stuff. But one important thing is when you're dealing with your rope is to keep your rope clean. And another thing is, is that most ropes, when you cut them, they're twisted so that they will unravel. And to fix a rope so it doesn't unravel, there's several ways. For a nylon rope, you can take a match, and this and here you have to use a torch since it's such a big rope, but you can burn the ends of it so it won't unravel. If you don't, it's just going to keep unraveling and fray all the way down. On a rope like this, a sisal rope, this is what would happen if you don't It'll just keep going down and it'll keep coming apart. So what you want to do, you can either burn your nylon ropes on the ends. Here's a smaller nylon rope, which probably you would use and burn it and it will look like this. Or you can use something simple if you want to do simple and you're not going to be using a lot. Just some black electrical tape. Just wrap it around like the one I just unwrapped. But the real way you want to wrap a rope if you're going to wrap a rope is like this. And it's wrapped with just thin line. And I'll show you how that's done here on this. Assume this is a small, you don't want to use things, it's just a small twine. But assume this is your rope. And I'm going to go over here. And on a rope, what you would do, you would start out and you would make a loop and run it up and down like that. And then bring your rope around from the bottom and just go round and round. You, you wrap the rope around and then you take your end of your rope and the loop that you made at the top, run it through there, and pull it tight, and then at the bottom, the end that you had, when you snug it up, and you pull it, and it works it to a nice wrap around it. You pull it real nice and tight and then you turn this end and this end off. And your rope will end up looking like, like this, and it will unravel. And I always take a mine and I put a little fin clear fingernail polish on it so it doesn't rot or it doesn't fray around on it. But that's how you, that's how you, you uh, wrap your rope so it doesn't fray. Uh, the other important thing is to keep your rope clean. You don't want to have it, throw it up wet, let it dry out good, keep the dirt off of it, keep it clean. Well, now let's get into some of the knots. And although there's thousands and thousands of knots out there, there's a few that are practical that you can use every day. I first got into knots when I joined the Boy Scouts when I was 60-some years ago, when I was 11 years old. And some of those knots I still use every day today, and things I do here at the library or do at home. First one I'm going to show you, let me try this real fast. What I'm going to show you is a square knot. A square knot was originally called a reef knot, and it was first identified in 1627 by Captain John Smith. That's the first note of it ever ever made. And all of this is a simple knot. This also didn't block the way. The square knot will start out, you have on it, uh, we're just going to assume these are two different ropes, and we're going to tie them together. It's used for joining. Uh, binding things, and what we're going to do, you take, you got your right, and the end of the rope is called the end naturally, but the middle of it where you're working is called the bite, and then the long end that goes out is called the standing end. Well, we're going to take the two ends, the right and your left, the right over the left, and then the left over the right. 
come up with a knot that looks like this. And you see how it separates. Now, square knot is a good knot for tying things together, binding things, but it will also spill. And the spilling is, this, is, this knot is meant to be pulled straight. There's tension on it like this. And if it's running and run off a different direction, you spill. And then it's weak. So what you want to do is, is use it as it's intended. Uh, the sign of a good knot is, is it's easy to tie. It's used for an intended purpose. And it's, it's easy to untie. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to untie. So let's do it one more time. Okay. Your right and your left hand. Bring your right over your left. And then the left over the right. The right. And you can tell how it slips. Okay. And then the, the next knot that I want to show you is a clove hitch. A clove hitch is another good knot you can use. And we're going to have to move over here to this post. You lay your, your bite over the thing, take your end, cross it over, and then bring the end up underneath. Pull it tight. And that's good for tying something up to a post, uh, cinching around the top of a bag or a sack, things like that. There's another way to tie it's easy if you got a post. You can take it and take your rope in your hand, make a loop this, make an overhand loop and another loop, and then flip them, flip both loops over. Flip them over like that, and then just slide them on, and you got a clove hitch. So that's a that's an easy way to tie it, but it's a good knot, holds tight. But again, it's it's meant to bind and pull like that. Now, the clove the clove hitch again from the history, it was first identified in 1769. So you see, a lot of these knots have been around for a long time, mostly used by sailors. Okay, now the, the next knot I'm going to show you is a timber hitch. Now, a uh, timber hitch is one that I like to use. I cut tree branches and trees down and, and move big pieces of, of timber or whatever. And a timber hitch is very simple. Say this is, a, this is my tree, and normally a tree is rough and, and jagged. So what you, you would do is tie it, reach around the tree, Make a loop around the tree, and then all you do is take your rope and bring it underneath like an overhand knot, and then wrap it a couple times one and two. So you've just basically wrapped it around, then you want to snug it down, and the friction of the rope around the tree and stuff is going to uh, is going to hold it in place. Now there's a variation of that of that knot called a killick hitch, and what it is, all it is is a basically the stability, it's a half hitch, and you would bring it around the top up further and bring your rope through so that when you pull the tree, it's not going to go every which way or pull whatever, it's going to pull it straight, so it gives a little bit of stability. So that's called a killick hitch, the combination of the two. Now. This is an old, one of the oldest knots used that I know that I know of. It was first noted in books in 1625. So it's this is the oldest knot that I'm going to show you that at least they're aware of. And a lot of these things have been used prior, but there's no written record of them. This is the first written record of that knot. Okay, so let me untie this. Uh, the next knot we're going to do is the the sheep bend, and the sheep bend is a uh, got its name, the sheep rope controls the lower sails uh, on the sailboat, and they used it a lot when they're eye missing or whatever, the broken rope, and it got the name Sheep Bend. And basically, to tie the knot, you're going to make a loop, 
bring the rope in, back around, and in between the ropes, and then pull it tight. You can go like two different size ropes. This particular knot was first identified or published in 1794. And it resembles, it resembles the bowling, but it's different. It's also been called the weaver's knot because it was used, they found in Neolithic times in some ruins, knots that they made their fishnets out of, and they used this particular knot for their knitting. So that's the sheep then. The next knot I'm going to show you is the bowling. The bowling is a life-saving knot, and it's used a lot for life-saving harnesses and whatever, and it will, it will not slip. Uh, you, have, you have to work it down, but it will not slip. You can tie it around your waist if you're hanging off of a cliff. Uh, you can throw lifelines to people. Uh, it's just a, a, a knot that you can, join, you can join two ropes together by using it, but it won't slip, and it's, and it's very safe. And it's something you won't use every day, but it's a something worth knowing if you ever if you were to ever need it. And all it be, all it begins with is a an underhand loop. We'll take the end of the rope here. Okay. And how I learned it in the Boy Scouts sixty some years ago. This is your tree. This is your cave. The bear comes out of the cave around the tree and back into the cave again. And snug it down, get it, work it tight. You got a big loop, you have a loop that will not slip. The knot will not slip. Now, it's also good to know to learn how to do it. And this may take you a little practice. Now I'm gonna stand up. If you were if you were hanging on the edge of something and you had your rope and some and you needed to tie the knot, you can tie it with one hand too. How you tie it around your if you were to hold on to the rope, you have, you have to have a little slack. Take the end of your rope, bring your hand over the rope, around, up, and back through, and you have a rope that holds around your waist and it will not slip. So you can pull your somebody can pull you up, or you can lower yourself down, or whatever. But that's a bolt. That's a bowl. Now, the last knot that I'm going to show you is a knot that I use all the time, and it's called a taut line hitch. And a taut line was a hitch used for stretching lines, pulling things tight. Uh, securing things and it is a knot it's been around in, since the 1600s I never really could find an exact date when they actually noted it was found or discovered but back in the 1600s the taut line hitch is a is a real practical hi a hitch that you use to tie things and, and tighten them up tighten up ropes where you want to put it like for example on your truck you tie it to one of your eyes on your truck and pull it tight, or it's mainly used in the scouting and stuff or is for your tent lines. Tie it to your tent peg and then pull up and tighten the, tighten the rope up to, to take the slack out. But it all it amounts to is taking your rope, bringing it out, bring it, bring it through one time and around again and then up to the top, and then tie it, tighten it up, cinch it up so it's nice and snug. And then what you can do is you can slide that rope out, and, and I always tie it on something slack. And then when you get it, when you get ready to tighten it up, you just pull it out, or if you want to loosen it up, you just slide it down. That's taut line hitch. This is one I use a whole lot. I use at the library, I probably use it every week, at least once or twice. We're going to do this again since it's kind of a lot of little wraps and whatever. So you take your rope, you bring it out, 
kind of make make an overhand loop and then bring it up in, into the middle of the loop once and then bring it up there twice and then go up and make another loop pull it tight work it so it's good and snug and then it will slip so you got your rope loose and you want to tighten up your rope going across just slide it down and it will it will tighten it will shorten the rope by sliding it down okay and that's pretty much all I have for you today those are those are a few knots that are very basic we have a lot of books that are available about knots and I would encourage you to play with it they kind of grow on you a little bit if you get playing with them there's all kind of knots there's fancy knots there's knots for every, about everything from carrying a whiskey jug on your back to a tightrope so but they're all made for a purpose and there's a lot of fancy knots you can tie doilies and there's all kind of knots that not necessarily like this but uh, knitting crocheting uh, doilies all that kind of stuff uses knots and this is just a practical way for out, this is more of an outdoor knot or sailing knots. But I hope you uh, enjoyed this, and I encourage you to go out and get some books and try to learn some of these knots. And I have some other books that I want to show you that are at the library. I'm going to have to go get them. I'd encourage all of you to come to the library and check out some of the books. We have several books on knots, everyday knots, which will make it maybe a little easier to see with drawings versus what trying to see my hands as I'm trying to move around. We have Encyclopedia of Knots and Fancy Knots, which is very detailed if you want to really get into it. Here's one for beginners, I think. This one and the Handbook of Knots is probably a really good one. It shows nice little drawings of the step-by-step -step nature for you to learn the knots and study them. And my own personal favorite, and I used to do a lot of knots, and I did it with Boy Scouts and made knot boards and whatever, but this is one that I bought myself. It's called the Ashley Book of Knots, and it has like 4,000 knots in it, and he made the book over an 11-year period, and I just really like it. But it's a little bit too complicated for beginners. All you really need is something like this, and just take some time, and you'll enjoy doing it, and you get hooked, and you'll be tying all kind of knots. The old sailors, they uh, they didn't really become a sailor or call a sailor until they knew all the ropes. So good luck and hope you have a good time doing it. Hope it helps you.